you just have no love <laughs> loss for some of those people that you were working with. TARP was a failure in your no no silver lining, just an out now failure. Well, there is a silver lining, and look, I, I don't have anything against the people personally. They're just part of a, of a system that when I got down to Washington, I mean, I was really shocked to see how much um, the, the interests of Wall Street, how much power. Uh, a handful of, of Wall Street banks have over our government and how much control they had over their bailout. How much power do they have? Spell um, it out, how much they have. They dictated the terms of their own bailout. And so TARP, there was some successes for TARP. I mean, the fact TARP did help prevent, along with other programs, a complete collapse of our financial system. So that is, that is a good thing. But it's all those other goals of TARP that Congress insisted upon when they gave this money and what Treasury promised that were unfulfilled. You know, it's not that extraordinary. You throw enough money at a couple institutions, they're not going to collapse. So that's why the program was supposed to help reinvigorate the economy. It was supposed to restore lending. When they got this money, they were actually supposed to put it back into the economy so we don't have the sluggish recovery we have today. And most importantly, it was supposed to help struggling homeowners. Um, this was part and parcel of why the Democrats, particularly in the House, voted for TARP, was the promise to help foreclosure relief for so many struggling homeowners. There was some foreclosure relief for people. A million oh. home, I think, is the number. I think the current number now is around 800000 which is one-fifth of what the goal was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. and, and the amount of money spent was supposed to be $50 billion. Um, you know, it's around three and a half, four, around what the cre like one, of, one of the credit card companies got. Neil, give us, give us a specific. Tell us what Congress dictated through the TARP fund that banks ended up dictating the specifics of. Tell us the mechanics of how that happened. Sure. I mean, just a, one example. Congress says you have to preserve home ownership. That's something the Treasury needed to do with the TARP funds. Because um, that was the original idea behind TARP. They were going to buy these mortgages. Right. And it got written into the bill that, that Treasury would then modify those mortgages. Well, Treasury didn't do that. They just piled money into the banks. Um, so that, that edict was out there. Then we had a program, a mortgage modification program, that Secretary Geithner himself told us back in 2009 was more about, in his words, foaming the runway for the banks. In other words, helping to extend out the foreclosure crisis for the benefit of the banks that he feared could still go under, not about helping homeowners. And that's why, so the, the program is a series of choices that were very favorable for the banks, uh, but bad for the homeowners. And when the banks started really abusing homeowners, violating the rules, um, really just pummeling the homeowners and squeezing the last few dollars out of struggling homeowners, rather than do something about it, you know, Treasury looked the other way. They complained to us that they were actually afraid that if they got tough with the banks, the banks might walk away from the program, which shows you the level of, of, of where the level of power lie between the banks and, and, uh, and Washington. You really, 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 really hate Timothy Geithner. Like, no, it's not really. true. No, yes, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's true. You would have you strong <laughs> dislike. It's not personal. I really... I didn't say it's personal, but I, I said you really, really... No, no, I hate what's happened to this country. I hate how he put the interests of the banks over homeowners and, and Main Street at every juncture. Um, I hate how he's preserved the status quo, the status quo we have. I hate his role in making the too big to fail banks even bigger and more dangerous. And I hate the fact that we're on the verge of another financial crisis if we don't address these things um, in, the, in the coming years. I hate all those things. Personally, I don't really know Tim Geithner. I only had a handful of interactions with him. Tim Geithner was on uh, Charlie Rose the other day, and here's what he said about the criticism that you have in your book of him. He raises this question, was Tim Geithner too friendly to the banks? Yeah. Uh, because he knew them from his As years you know, at the New York I'm Fed. deeply offended by that. I find that deeply offensive. It, you know, it's the result of an urban myth. A lot of people, including many of my critics, said we went out and gave and lost trillions of dollars of the American taxpayers' money at that time, deeply misleading, terribly damaging to confidence. Is that wrong? Is it deeply misleading? Is it terribly damaging? He seems like he really, really, really hates you back. That might be true. Um, <laughs> look, it might be this if it were true. But what, 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 what Secretary Geithner did in this interview, um, and it's really kind of funny, because one of the things I talk about in the book is I, I lay clear and expose how the Treasury Department, the White House, how, how Washington works and how untrue things, misrepresentation, lies are floated in the media to try to discredit. And this is actually the same lie that Treasury floated back in 2009 against me. And I write about it in the book. It's on page 163. I took a peek at it after I heard that. I never said that TARP was going to cost people trillions of dollars. That was them twisting a different report that I did where I said, when I talked about the total commitment to the financial system. Um, but that whole speech was sort of right out of the book, the faux outrage. Uh, I talk about how often Treasury officials told me how, how deeply offended they were of various things. I mean, this is just politics and out of the playbook. And, and it's a shame because it detracts from what are very, very real issues and challenges that face our economy. I wish, wish you would get serious and talk about the issues instead of uh, trying to mislead the American people even more.